It's Black History Month, and that means 28 days of Black History. Hello, lovely people. I'm Anabong, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've made a long form video, so let's see if I remember how to do this. In the US, February is Black History Month, and so to celebrate, I set myself the challenge of drawing an influential figure in Black history every day for 28 days, and I also created a YouTube short for each one. If you want to check out my Black History Month playlist, I will link it in the description below and add a playlist card in the top right corner of this video. Today, I'm going to do somewhat of a mini sketchbook tour slash recap of my Black History Month portraits. I won't be going over details about the subjects I chose to draw because I shared all of that in the shorts I made throughout February, but instead I am going to talk about my process, my struggles, my successes, and what, if anything, I learned last month. For this challenge, I used an array of art mediums and tools. I used pencils, pens, coloured pencils, coloured watercolour pencils, watercolours in two mediums, water-based markers, alcohol markers and Posca pen. For day one, I started with Imhotep. Last October, I drew influential Black American authors as my Inktober challenge, but this time I purposefully chose non-American figures to celebrate the accomplishments of Black people from around the world. So I started with Imhotep, the great Egyptian chancellor and the true father of science and medicine. I was a bit rusty getting back into portrait sketching and was pleasantly surprised by how he turned out. Then days two and three, Mbeya Nahanda and Nzinga Mbanda are both influential African leaders who fought against colonialism. For this whole page, I chose to stick to the closest thing I have to a comfort zone, not being comfortable with any art mediums, uh, pencil, ink and watercolours. You can see my confidence growing by day three and I start to experiment with different colours and with deeper shadows and lighting, but I really need to stop using watercolours in this sketchbook because the paper is not designed for it. First of all, it's smooth paper, so it gives no texture to the paint, and secondly, it's too thin. The paper just warps and bends and really objects to being subjected to such a wet medium. So no more watercolours in the sketchbook. Lucky for me, the sketchbook is nearly done. <laughs> Ignore the left page here, that's just some art studies. Days 4 and 5 are hopefully two figures you recognise. There's Toussaint Louverture, the leader of the Haitian Revolution, and Nelson Mandela, the leader of the South African Revolution. As you can probably tell, Toussaint is a bit of a cheat. <laughs> what happened is, I drew the sketch, was relatively happy with it, and then decided to experiment with water-based markers. I don't usually use water-based markers because, unlike alcohol markers, they don't blend well. Needless to say, it was a disaster. If I wasn't drawing Toussaint as part of a challenge I was filming, then I would have probably left a disaster in my sketchbook to look back on and learn from my foolishness. But because it was a video and I don't want you to think I'm completely inept at drawing, I whipped up a quick digital rendering from my original sketch and stuck it in. Crisis averted. With Mr Mandela, I returned to alcohol markers for the blending capabilities. Again, I'm still experimenting with all of these mediums, especially when it comes to colouring skin, because you can be very experimental with it, but you do need to know what you're doing, which I don't. I like how he came out mostly, but the grey I chose for shading is just too light. I needed to go back with a darker tone, but I was scared I would go too dark and ruin it. I might go back after this and fix it with a darker tone. I will not let Fia win. Rose Chibambo and Donna Beatrice are both African revolutionaries and for days six and seven, I decided to go back to basics and just stick with pencil and paper. There are two reasons behind this. One, you can see how badly alcohol markers bleed through paper and so I wanted to break up their usage to not waste valuable sketchbook space. And two, I felt like the colour was a distraction and I needed to return to some sketching technique. With both of them, I like that you can see the volume in the faces, but the eyes are the most important part of a portrait and they are lacking life. They're lifeless. And so I want to work out a way to imbue more life into my eyes. As a spread, it's a mess, but individually, I had different learning curves here. 
First, there's Angelo Solomon, the father of pure Masonic thought. I wanted to experiment with coloured pencils here, but I realised after the fact that I should not have sketched with a lead pencil. <laughs> I like the effect of the loose coloured pencil etchings, but the grey pencil overwhelms it all. I was short on time with Bob Marley, which is why I stuck to just a pencil sketch. As an image, I don't hate it. The teeth need work, but I do wish it looked more like Bob. Giselle Rabasahala, who fought for Madagascan independence, was ruined by adding colour. I drew the sketch, then added the alcohol marker, and then the outline last. Alcohol markers bleed, and so the sketch was lost underneath the colours, and by the time the inking stage came around, the piece was ruined. I learnt my lesson with Wangari Matai, the Kenyan environmental activist, and took more care in the colouring stage. I think it paid off, and this is actually one of my favourite portraits of the lot. Okay, so we're going to just briefly ignore this guy on the left and the right, and focus on the two dudes in the middle. From Mansa Musa, the richest man who ever lived, I learnt my lesson from Solomon and sketched him in a Prisma erasable coloured pencil. I was trying to copy the technique that Gabriella Nico uses when she does coloured pencil portraits. I don't think I nailed it. But she does have a course on Domestica about creating portraits with coloured pencils, and so I may take that one day and finally learn the secrets behind her magic. Arturo Schomburg was actually a special request from one of my subscribers who asked if I could feature a Puerto Rican influential figure in black history. Schomburg is one of the reasons Black History Month exists. He spent his life curating a library of historical artefacts from and about black Americans. When I look at his portrait, I just want to upload it to Procreate and use the liquify tool on it. Everything just needs to be shifted this way and that to look more 3D and less wonky. Now for these guys on the end. Here you have another casualty to water-based markers. I don't know why I went back and I don't think I make that mistake a third time. This guy is a Harlem Hellfighter. And they were one of the most renowned units of the First World War and they were another subscriber request. I drew him, ruined him by adding water-based marker, and so decided to fix it in Procreate, and I actually like the result a lot. And yes, Liquify did come into play. But then I decided I wanted to draw one of the more famous members of the Hellfighters, and you will see him on the next page. So here you have Henry Johnson, who single-handedly fought off an entire German patrol in World War I. For Henry, I finally listened to scent and reason and used watercolours on watercolour paper. And this is by far one of my favourites, if not my favourite of the whole series. There you go, you can stop watching now, <laughs> but actually please don't. As you can see, I'm getting bolder with my lighting and my colours. I still don't think he'll pass the mirror test, but he is a step in the right direction. The rest of the spread is all experimentations in coloured pencil. Alessandro de Medici is the first black head of state in Europe, and with him, I stuck with that light coloured pencil effect. Abraham Petrovich Ganibal was a Russian nobleman and the great grandfather of Alexander Pushkin. I used watercolour pencils on him and wet them. I hate the effect when used in this portrait, but I can see it being useful for painting skies and landscapes or creating a dreamy effect. Tetu Batul is an anti-colonial Ethiopian empress and she again is rendered in coloured pencil but then with Rose Lockison, who was one of the first female soldiers from Chad, I decided to really try and bring out the colours of the coloured pencil and blend them how they're supposed to be and I like how she turned out. My wrist hurt a lot at the end of it though and I do want to figure out how to get more, um, more colour and contrast from coloured pencils. Okay, we're getting through them now. We're on days 19 to 21. We have Vincent Guerrero, the first black president of the Americas, Yasuke, the first black samurai, Haile Selassie, who managed to hold off the invading Italian army for longer than anyone expected, and the great musician Miriam Makeba, Pata Pata. Whenever I need a reset, I go back to pencil, and Guerrero was my reset. But then I got all excited and hyped for Yosuke, and this is the first time I used ink outline with coloured pencil, and I love it. 
obviously I can still see everything wrong with this piece but the ideas behind it and the effect of the ink with the pencil is doing it all for me. I definitely want to play around with this technique more. Also in England we call them pencil crayons so sorry for being a sellout and assimilating. Haile Selassie and Miriam Makeba are both watercolours on watercolour paper but for Miriam I added pencil crayons for deeper shadows and details but then I got scared and backed off. I love the texture it brings to the portrait though and she is also one of my favourites. Then of course you can see Posca came in for some badly done highlights. I intentionally wanted this whole spread to be done with alcohol markers to practice with them and get better. The results have been conclusive. Mariama Bar is a prolific African author, but her portrait is probably the worst of the series. Reverend Desmond Tutu had promise, but I really should have subjected him to the mirror test before I started rendering in colour. He's all skew with, and I'm very sorry about it. Things started to improve with Lobotsubeni Mludli, another African queen fighting against colonialism. But then we get to the great Shaka Zulu, and it all goes wrong again. <laughs> I was experimenting with using unconventional colours and it failed. It was the blue. The blue ruined me. Back to the drawing board. Literally. And we finally made it to the end. <laughs> Days 27 and 28. Saronia Mangu fought against the French and won. And Fun Maleo Ransom Kuti, who changed her name to Anikulapo Kuti to better embrace her Yoruba heritage, is a powerhouse who did everything and fought for women's rights like a boss. These two portraits are experiments in pencil crayons, Posca pen, and believe it or not, water based markers. I wasn't happy with the lack of contrast in the Mangu portrait, so when it came to Mamakuti, I tentatively went in with water-based markers to emphasise the shadows. My only wish is that I've been bolder. Next time. So that's my Black History Month drawing challenge review. Lessons I have learnt. Experiment. Be bold. And don't be afraid to ruin the portrait because you'll just have to draw it again. And every time you draw, you learn something and always do the mirror test on your sketches before you start rendering in colour. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with all your friends. If you have any video requests or pupil, animals or objects you'd like to see me attempt to draw, leave them in the comments below. And as always, have a good day, good evening or good night. Goodbye!